There are four different kinds of macromolecules, meaning very large molecules, that make up the bulk of cells. These are carbohydrates, or polysaccharides, nucleic acids, meaning DNA and RNA, lipids, including fat, and proteins. If we look at what kinds of molecules are in cells, and let's start off with E. coli here on the left, of course what we see is that the bulk of what's in a cell, and E. coli is typical, is water. But if we take out the water okay, and look at everything else in a cell besides water, and here we've expanded that, and this is what we call the dry mass, and sometimes the dry mass is also equivalent to the biomass. Actually, the biomass would be all of the organic molecules in a cell, and that excludes this few percentage of inorganic molecules. This is inorganic molecules right here at the top. But all the rest are organic molecules. So if we look at the biomass, what we see in an E. coli cell is that protein is the most abundant biomass macromolecule. And here that's shown in orange. The next ab most abundant in E. coli are the nucleic acids, RNA here shown in yellow, and DNA in this light green. And then here are in the light blue are the lipids, and in the dark green are the polysaccharides. This portion here are other small organic molecules, which are not macromolecules. All of these here, then, are what we call the macromolecules, the large molecules in a cell. So let's compare E. coli to humans, the biomass in humans. Humans have a comparable amount of protein, but much less DNA and RNA, a lot more lipids, and that's because of the fat in our cells. And this is fairly typical, not just of human, but of most mammalian cells. And then finally, uh, in this last column, we see plant cells. Plant cells um, have very little fat, very little uh, lipids. Um, they have a fair amount of protein, but the vast bulk of a plant cell consists of polysaccharides. Okay. And this is, makes a lot of sense because this is going to be cellulose. Okay. Think about all the wood. And it's going to be starch. Think potatoes. When we look at macromolecules, in thinking about macromolecules, I want you to keep three questions in mind. These three questions are for each type of macromolecule, what are the building blocks? So what are the building blocks for each type of macromolecule? Again, for each type of macromolecule, what bonds or what, what's the glue that holds the building blocks together to make the macromolecule? And finally, I want you to consider the structure and function of the macromolecules. The macromolecules are put together by stringing together uh, monomers or building blocks. Okay? And think about what will happen if the monomers or the building blocks change. Each type of structure requires a different set of building blocks. And the set of building blocks are actually genetically coded in the DNA. So the genetic code specifies the building blocks that are used to make our macromolecules. And think in terms of evolutionary terms. So if the genetic code specifies the building blocks, that then make our macromolecules, we said that for evolution to take place, we have to have genetic variation. And that genetic variation has to make a difference in the ability of the individual organism to survive and reproduce. So how does the genetic code do that? By altering building blocks, 
by making changes in the building blocks, it's going to make changes in the final type of structure that it's going to, uh, that's going to result. So by changing a building block, you're going to change the structure and function of a macromolecule, and that is going to affect the ability of the cell or the organism to survive and reproduce in the environment. So this is the big question. How do changes in the building blocks affect the structure and function of macromolecules?